Okay, see if you can tell what is wrong with this picture. Uh, this is in Russia. You can see it's from Russian TV. This is a former world champion swimmer who's been given the honor of running with the Olympic torch. You can see there's a problem with the torch. It's not on fire. So there's some frantic gesturing. Can I get a little help here? Uh, yes, the torch has gone out. But finally, he does get a little help from a guy who seems like he is maybe kind of a plain clothes cop. He's at least a smoker because he pulls out his Zippo and we pretend like the whole thing never happened. Can you spark this up for me, buddy? Yeah, thanks. This is the Olympic torch. It is never supposed to go out, right? I mean, they set the Olympic cauldron on fire with great fanfare to start the lead up to the Olympic games in Russia in February. And then they start the torch relay, but on day one of the torch relay, the torch goes out. So that, that was Sunday. Then on day two of the torch relay on Monday, it happened again. Uh, you see the guy running with the torch. People gathered on the streets to watch and cheer. The torch flickers a couple times, and then, uh, y you know what? I think it's out. Uh, stop everything. Th they bring in some other torches. They try fiddling with it for a while. This goes on for a minute or two. Finally, after a long time with lighters, with other torches, they finally get the thing sparked up again. A cheer goes up from the crowd, and they're off again. And then it goes out again. Uh, this time it's a very happy runner waving. Yay, finishing up my part of the torch relay. And it's time for the photo op. Time to hand off the flame torch to torch to the next person in the relay. Oh, geez, it's out. And they can't figure out how to get it started again. This one goes on for a really long time, goes on for a few minutes. Finally, somebody finds their lighter and maybe a piece of kindling or paper or something. And they have, oh, there we go. Get both torches going again. But they were out for a long time. This is not the way it's supposed to go, right? This is not the way Russia's Olympics are supposed to start. Also, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing wrong. Russia, seriously, using the rainbow flag as your outfit for rain your rainbow Olympic torchbearers? The rainbow flag? Russia, seriously? There's been worry building for a while now over how really radically anti-gay Russia has become under Vladimir Putin. Uh, it is not a new phenomenon. After repeated violent attacks on gay pride parades in Russia, Moscow decided last summer that they would temporarily ban gay pride parades. The term of the temporary ban in Moscow is 100 years, a 100-year ban. So problem solved for the next century then. As the Olympics have approached, though, Russia has really stepped it up. In June, they passed a law that criminalizes even saying that gay people should have equal rights. They say it's an anti-propaganda law. Then came their new law that bans Russian kids from getting adopted by any same-sex couples from other countries. The new law even bans any single people or even unmarried straight couples from adopting Russian kids if the country that you live in allows same-sex marriage. So even unmarried American straight people are not allowed anymore to adopt one of the 600,000 Russian kids who are up for adoption because America is too gay for Russia. The flurry of new anti-gay laws in Russia has caused some consternation uh, about the Olympics. It's raised the question, even in places like the president's interview on The Tonight Show, about whether or not participating in the Russian Olympics implies some sort of tacit approval for what Russia is doing now to gay people. This becomes particularly acute now that Russia is moving on to their next big idea, which is they want to go into people's homes and start removing kids from their parents if their parents are gay. Adopted kids, foster kids, even your biological children will be taken away from you if you are gay under the next bill that they're moving. And so it is an interesting question for countries that believe gay people shouldn't have their children stolen. Uh, it's an interesting question for other countries in the world as Russia keeps moving on this stuff as to whether or not participating in the Russian hosted Olympics implies some sort of tacit consent, some sort of tacit approval for what Russia is doing. But what about not tacit approval, not silent approval? What about totally out loud, overt approval of what Russia is doing? Putin saying, you know what? Don't bring this homosexual propaganda in, into my country for the Olympics. We believe in one man, one woman marriage. There is no homosexual marriage in Russia. Which president is the lion of Christianity, the defender of Christian values, the president that's calling his nation back to embracing its identity as a nation founded on Christian values. Those, ladies and gentlemen, are quotes from Vladimir Putin, the president 
of Russia. He's taken what used to be our strengths, which is now defaulted into our weaknesses because of Barack Obama, no leadership, and he's making them his strengths, and he's emerging now on the world stage as a newly discovered leader. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why you need to rise up. The, the people here, this is why we rise up. What Russia's done here with this law is they have expressed the values that we have been advocating for years and years and years. Well, this is exactly what Russia has established as official public policy. So in my mind, we ought to be celebrating this. This is public policy that we've been advocating, and here is a, here's a nation in the world that's actually putting it into practice. Turns out, actually, that the anti-gay American right has been more than just applauding Russia and Vladimir Putin as they enact all these anti-gay laws that they want for us here, too. Turns out that they haven't just been cheering them on. The anti-gay right here has also been helping Russia do this. Right Wing Watch at People for the American Way and the Human Rights Campaign and the Council for Global Equality, they've been trying to ring the alarm bell here in the U.S. about how the American anti-gay group called the National Organization for Marriage has been working with the Russian parliament. They worked with the Russian parliament on passing that country's adoption ban for not just gay people, but for whole countries that are too positive on gay rights. It was June 11th when the Russian parliament passed the propaganda bill, the you can't talk about being gay bill. That was June 11th. Two days later, on June 13th, the Russian parliament got a visit from Brian Brown. He's the head of the American anti-gay group, the National Organization for Marriage. This is the Russian language website about the committee testimony that day. Now we will use Google Translate. So here it is, minus the Cyrillic. You can zoom in there to the speech delivered to the Russian parliament by Brian Brown, president of the National Organization for Marriage. And the head of it now, uh, Brian, Brian Brown is now confirming uh, that he was there. He, he says Russian anti-gay activists invited him to Russia to address lawmakers there about their anti-gay laws, and he did so. Uh, they've even posted a Russian summary of his remarks online, uh, which we have now translated. You can see both versions tonight at matoblog.com. Brian Brown wrapped up his remarks uh, to the Russian parliament by saying he thought his visit to Russia will enable the development of this movement around the world. We will band together. We will defend our children and their normal civil rights. Every child should have the right to have normal parents. He also did interviews uh, with the Russian media while he was there, talking about how important it is for the Russian people to fight gay people on marriage and on adoption. Вы боретесь за усыновление, а это неразрывно связано с браком. И если вы сейчас не защитите свои ценности, боюсь, очень скоро мы увидим совсем плохие перемены во всем мире. Anti-gay American activists in Russia urging Russia to defend their values and crack down on marriage rights for gay people and also to crack down on kids and gay families. And five days after that visit to Russia and his speech to parliament and his interviews on Russian TV, Russia did pass their new adoption ban targeting not just gay couples, but even straight people from any country that supports gay rights. The bill's Russian sponsor said that even though there are hundreds of thousands of kids up for adoption in Russia, those kids would be better off in an orphanage than living with a mom or a dad who's gay. That passed five days after the American National Organization for Marriage went over to Russia and told them to pass it. Now Russia's moving on to the next step. The legislative calendar has been set for them to debate their new bill, which would forcibly remove kids from existing families if the parents in those families are gay. You'll be stripped of your custody rights of your own kids if the Russian government thinks you're gay. The debate on that bill is set to start in February. The Russian Olympics are set to start in February. That should be interesting. Meanwhile, here at home, the same American activist group bringing you a virulently anti-gay Russia. They remain right at the center of American Republican politics. Here's Marco Rubio agreeing to make robocalls for the National Organization for Marriage. Here's Ted Cruz at a National Organization for Marriage-sponsored summit in Iowa, trying to seem presidential. Tomorrow kicks off the Values Voter Summit in Washington, D.C., where Paul Ryan and Ted Cruz and Rand Paul and Marco Rubio are all scheduled to speak. I actually think Senator Rubio might be bailing on the Values Voters folks tomorrow. Don't tell them, but we called and asked and he wouldn't commit. The first day session has confirmed speeches from Ted Cruz, from Paul Ryan, from Rand Paul, basically the whole 2016 Republican presidential field. Uh, also speaking, first day session, Brian Brown and the National Organization for Marriage. Because presumably all the Republican 2016 candidates will be pledging their fealty to his organization, just like every major Republican candidate did in the 2012 presidential election. Presumably the Russian in tomorrow's event will have to be in subtitles. 
the present and future of the Republican Party kissing the ring tomorrow so everybody will know that they side with the parts of the American conservative movement that have been traveling to Russia, egging them on to step up their campaign to destroy gay people's lives and rip kids out of their families and throw them into orphanages because family values.